Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today. Today I will be talking about dead beat dads. You are missing out. This is a warning to men who deny their children when they are young. It's going to come a time when you're older, when everyone around you are surrounded by their adult children and grandchildren, and you are by yourself, and you will want the comfort of your kids and grandchildren, and they will have no parts of you. Right now, you are in your 20s, maybe your 30s, may even be in your 40s. And you want to party, you want to hang out, uh, you want to be out there with your friends, you don't want to see your children, uh, you don't take care of them fin- financially, you live life haphazardly like you don't have a care in the world. You only live for the next high, the next drink, the next party. You only, you're only concerned. Your only concern is determined where and when you're going to get that next joint, that next drink, that next party, that next good, good, that next good time or whatever you call it. You don't send a card for their birthday to wish them a happy birthday. You don't send them anything um, wishing them a Merry Christmas or a Happy New Year, uh, uh, Easter, a Halloween, nothing. Your thoughts are only with your own selfish needs. You are leaving your sons and daughters without the influence of a father. I saw a program, um, I don't even know what channel it was on. I don't know where I saw this, but there was a father and he was in the hospital. He had just had a newborn. I'm not really even sure whether it was a daughter or son, but it, right now it doesn't matter. Uh, the point is he was talking to the newborn because the newborn was crying. He had a, a gentle voice and he was just talking. Oh, what's the matter? I'm just paraphrasing. Oh, how's my baby? It's going to be all right. Just talking to the newborn and the newborn quieted. The newborn stopped crying. So the father, uh, he stopped talking. And the newborn start crying again. And again, he came back in his gentle voice, talking to the newborn, reassuring the newborn. I'm here, just basically talking. And again, the newborn stopped crying. Now, don't tell me there's not a connection there. There's a natural connection. And there's also a spiritual connection between the father and that child. Much like the connection between our Heavenly Father and us. How when we're stressed, when we are confused, when we are pressured, when we are lonely, when we are in need of something that's missing and we go to our Heavenly Father for comfort and then you you sit back and you listen in your spirit of what the, our Heavenly Father is telling us and we quiet down and we're content and we're at ease. No one can tell me that a positive father image is not important in our children's lives. Now, some of the effects of men growing up with the, with the, without a father is they're more likely to be aggressive, more likely to be depressed, more likely to have low self-esteem, more likely to do poorly in school, 
more likely to be incarcerated and commits more likely to commit suicide, more likely to use drugs. It's suggested that they seek counseling or the support groups if you fall in that category, men. To seek role models, mentoring programs. Acknowledging your anger and then forgiving. Statistics show that fatherless men adversely affect, well, let me just rephrase that. Statistics show fatherless uh, people, men and women, are adverse, adversely affected. Uh, 63% men, and these statistics been a while, so it might be a little more or less. Uh, I think this was a few years ago, these uh, statistics were taking. And then females, 37%. Out of the people that were interviewed, it was 22,863 people that was uh, on this, um, uh, on, in this poll. Now for women, fathers provide their daughters with a masculine example. They teach our girls about respect and boundaries dealing with other men. If a woman is without her father, they're more likely to have um, self-esteem issues. They struggle to build and maintain relationships. They're more likely to have eating disorders. They're prone to depression. A lot of times they're sexually active earlier than uh, girls, women that have a father figure. Now, there's always exceptions to the rule in either either instance. And then they're susceptible to addiction. 70% of unplanned teenage pregnancies occur in homes where there is no father. And that was getting back to the sexually active part. Now, what kind of father do you have? When, When my parents broke up, he stopped participating in my life. What 39% said that was the kind of father experience or absent father experience they had. 22% said my father is physically physically there, but emotionally absent. He's physically present, but he's, but emotionally absent. That he comes home for work probably and sits in that chair and watch TV, drink a beer. And, uh, you know, he, he might say, Hey girl, what's going on? Hey, hey dude, what's, what's up with daddy's man? And that's it. If that 12% say my father died. And that should be the only time that the, uh, child is not, um, uh, uh, does not have a fa- a father in a home, at least not a um, uh, father by by a uh, father, you know, uh, the bio father. That's what I'm trying to say. But then a father image should be brought into that child's life, whether it be an uncle, a cousin, a, a grandfather, what have you. Now, seven percent have uh, say their father had a substance. A substance abuse and that prevented a relationship. 2% said that their father was incarcerated. And then 19% says, I never met my father and know little or nothing about him. Now, there was an article uh, by uh, a gentleman. And his article was, and I'll leave the link in the description area. 
His article was named, No, Most Black Kids Are Not Fatherless. He has actually wrote a book. Now, the article was in the Huff Huffington Post, and it uh, his article reads, Amidst Amid the debates ranging now over racism in America, there's a myth rearing its ugly head. It's one I've been fighting to end and one that all those of us committed to both racial and gender equality should learn about. The myth is that most black fathers are absent from their homes or that most black children grow up without their fathers. But both of these claims are false. Still, the myth shows up in tweets carrying misleading statistics, often from people blaming fatherlessness for numerous problems facing the black community. It also comes from officials such as Dallas Police Chief David Brown. And you have to understand that this article uh, was written, I think, in 2016 or 17. Anyway, he says, uh, David Brown at that time, who said 70, 70% of the African American community is raised by single women. For my book, All In, I set out to show the truths about today's dads that included, that included a chapter devoted to the myths about African American fathers. And he said, here are some of the facts. Most black fathers live with their children. There are about 2.5 million who live with their children and 1.7 million who don't, according to the CDC. Black fathers who live with their children are actually the most involved fathers of all, on average, a CDC study found. The lead researcher told me the study I report on in the book remarks the debunking of the black fathers being absent myth. But why do other statistics such as what Brown said paint such a different and more dire picture? Brown referred to single women. This means unmarried. Having unmarried parents does not make a child fatherless. Some unmarried couples live and raise children together. Many studies of fatherlessness also mistakenly use housing as their sole determinant. This is why fatherlessness statistics in general are inflated. Many children of divorced parents don't share a legal address with their fathers, but still see their fathers often. They're not fatherless. Fatherlessness is still a bigger problem statistically in the black community than it is among other racial groups. Some kids who don't live with their dads really are fatherless. And when I examined census reports about black children, I found that slightly more than half don't have the same legal residence as their fathers. Yes, I know this seems confusing at first. Some fathers have died at times killed in violence, for example, so they're obviously not included in studies that look at fathers. And some men of any race become what I call serial impregnators, having lots of children without raising them, more children than the good dads do. This helps explain the very different statistic. One such man has a chapter in my book explaining why he, why he ignored his six children until finally realizing the error of his ways. Tackling fatherlessness certainly requires change among men, including the minority of black men who are choosing to shrink their responsibilities. And when it comes to the black community specifically, tackling the fatherlessness also requires ending structural forces of racism. For example, disproportionate incarceration of black men for similar offenses put dads in jail, leaving fatherless children who are more likely to face all sorts of problems in the future, including criminal behavior. He says, in the book, I spent time at a jail interviewing dads who are enrolled in a program to turn their lives around. Moving in the right direction begins with understanding the reality. Most black children are not 
fatherless, and most black dads are setting a great example. Now I must say, my son, my son-in-law, they're both great fathers. They love spending time with their kids. In fact, I, I'm going to um, my grandson's basketball game tonight. To my knowledge, I don't remember a time. In fact, I know there's, there hasn't been a time that my son-in-law had not gone to his son's uh, game. Both him and my daughter cheer their son on. They cheer all those guys on. But they, of course, give that extra little attention. And I usually, and, and I encourage um, anyone to go on YouTube. I have uh, a few of the games on my YouTube channel, Being Marilyn Gale. And I show, uh, I have video footage of the highlights. And I have uh, video footage of, you know, the um the, the highlights and just a little more, um, tidbits of the, of the game. And, um, I think it's important to encourage and uh, support your child in whatever sport that they're playing. I, as I get older, I'm, I'm realizing it more and more how it's so important to do that. Um, I, my, my little grandson, he is a, an excellent, excellent player. Um, he's on, the, a, a team that they travel a little bit when the high school team is, you know, is not playing, uh, and they don't have any scheduled games. Um, I don't know if it's just the off season, but I know he's on two teams and one of the teams he was voted MVP. Which I'm very proud of. He was voted MVP, and um, uh, it, it it is said that the coach uh, mentioned that he he plays like he's taller than what it is. But see, he's got skills, and he's making those three pointers, and um, you know, playing is is it's exciting to uh, watch it really is so if you're interested please please watch it on youtube and of course you know it'll be recognizable the the video because you know the uh thumbnail is um the the guys on the uh, basketball court so you'll instantly know you know um that that's the team and and the name of the the team is the um the cats and and uh, they are an excellent team and i um they were the the season started they i think they lost the first game and then they won the two games so we'll see how good they do tonight but getting back to the dads you're missing out i know of of uh, sons and daughters that do not have their dads in their life and then as the dad gets older, start getting in their 60s and 70s, you know, and older. And then all of a sudden they want this unconditional love from their kids. And the kids don't want to be bothered. they like, I'm good. I, you wasn't there for this and you wasn't there for that and this and the other. So, you know, I'm good. Dads, you are going to regret the day. That you were not a part of your kid's life and they won't want nothing to do with you. Not nothing. Now, see, I had my dad in the home. I don't know. I don't know what it is to not have, you know, a dad in the home growing up. My bio dad I had in the home. Not a stepdad, not a play dad, not a uncle dad cousin dad I had my dad in the home and it was eight of us and uh as I was growing up and some of my friends would be amazed and they would said your dad was in the home and then they were more amazed that every one of us had the same father and I'm not n knocking anyone that you know have a, a half sister or brother because you know divorce happens remarriage or whatever and uh you know 
don't shame. That's your sister. That's your brother. I don't, I don't really believe in halves and steps anyway. Either that's your sister, brother, or it's not. I don't believe in all that. Uh, but anyway, um, they were amazed. You know, the, the women in my age group. And I'm a grandmother now. And I know I look good. But I just had to throw that in. But anyway, uh, they were amazed that, that the dad was in the home and that we all had the same father. So getting back to that example that I said, uh, the guy talking to his newborn in the hospital. Dads, you are important. You are valuable. Now, if you come in, you know, you're in the dead and you're, you're in the home and you're, and all your, your child see you smoking weed, uh, shooting up, drinking and, and, and gambling with your buddies and cussing like a sailor. No, no, you're not a good dad. You're there, but you're not a good dad. And you're not setting a good example. But I'm talking about those good dads. That go to every game, that, that support their kids, that love their kids enough to show up, enough to be supportive in all that they do, you know. And, um, you're missing out those who, who aren't in your kids' club. You're just going to regret it. May I say that a few times so it will get through your thick heads. And if you're one of those deadbeat dads that I spoke about earlier, you can change it right now. You can give that child a call, set up with the mom. I want to see my child. I want to be a part of that, my child's life. I understand what I did wrong. Forgive me. Ask for that child's forgiveness and be a consistent part of his or her life. You will reap the rewards of that. I guarantee. Now, don't wait until they're, you know, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever. And you old and decrepit and now you want, you know, your kids to be around because you feel, you know, like you don't want to be alone. Now all your buddies that, that are incarcerated are dead and you don't have nobody else. So now you're going to seek out your kids. Well, you know what? If you do that, a lot of times, like I said before, those kids not going to be wanting, want to be bothered with you. In fact, there's, you know, they may... Not show it because I still feel that's some hurt there that's causing them to reject you. But um some people just, some kids just, you know, you weren't there when I need you. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And all I say, all I want to say to those uh men and those women who their father has not been an active part of their life, forgive your dad. Forgive him for not being there. Forgive him for uh, not supporting you financially, emotional, emotionally, spiritually, what have you. The forgiveness is for you, not for that sucker. It's for you. But in forgiving does not mean you have to have anything to do with him. Because he, most likely he just want to be around you because he know he's getting ready to die. Let's be real. He wants his family. He wants his kids around you. But forgive him for you so you can release that. You can release that out your spirit. You can release that out of your life. Forgive him. But it doesn't mean you have to uh, force yourself to have a relationship if you don't want one. If you want one, you know, tread lightly. Because the sucker may not have changed. Tread lightly. Guard your heart. It doesn't mean you have to jump in. And just, oh, all is forgiven. And in your heart, you know you can't stand that man. But forgive him and go about your life. And you'll never have to see him again. A day in your life if you don't want to. But release it out of you. So, that's what I got. I wanted to appeal to you dead beat dads and turn your selfish little silly self around and do better. Do better by your kids. 
because you're going to be held accountable, accountable whether you realize or not. You're going to be held accountable and you're going to reap what you sow. And just because your dad wasn't in your life means that, oh, well, you know, I didn't have a dad. So, well, his sorry sucker, if he's still alive, he reaping it. And especially, you know, and I believe in the afterlife. Now, that's my belief. And you're going to pay if you haven't been a good dad. You're going to pay. So anyway, I'm going to stop preaching. I'm going to get down off my soapbox and I'm going to uh, get myself together so I can go to my grandson's game. And I'll be bringing some footage. Um, not a whole lot because my daughter, uh, she uh, makes um, she makes the highlights of the games and she she gives me highlights. Uh, that's uh, she's she's becoming a professional at, at uh, video. Uh, taping these games so hers is a little bit more exciting because she's editing and she's doing it doing it better than me and it's so fast paced sometimes that I'm just going with my camera and you can tell this this child I don't know what she doing she she her camera's supposed to be here and is there you can tell I'm not I'm not an expert like she is as at uh, something fast paced like that but anyway uh, I'm going to let you go and you have a beautiful day and have a wonderful weekend and um, heed my words, men. Do better. Do better. Good night.